So, Mario from Fab. In today's video, I'm going to be making a set of uh, custom rear and lower arms for the mongrel, which is obviously all MX5 based underneath, so this is just an MX5 arm. And I'm going to redesign it and um, cut it all out on the CNC plasma. We're going to have to make a jig, make some parts on the lathe. So, um, I've just been over to see Matt who's painting the car, picked up this arm, got to have a little look at the car and the work he's been doing and um, it's easy to see he's doing like top notch job on it. Yeah I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who went over to his channel and subscribed and watched the videos and that's been following him on there. When um, Matt contacted me about painting the car the sort of deal with him doing it was that he would get um, traffic from my site go straight over to his channel because he was just starting a channel and obviously that initial the first like 12 months of building a channel is the hardest bit it's really hard to even get your videos seen you're making videos that no one's watching and it's quite soul destroying so the deal was that he would get the, the traffic uh, from you guys watching it and uh, you know that would be like a fair deal for him painting the car. Um, I was a little bit worried that it might not work as well as it did and um, he's taken on a big project which he's not getting paid for and um, he's doing it in his spare time. Yeah, I was thinking like, you know, what if it doesn't, what if he doesn't get, you know, this, this boost of his channel that he was expecting to, but um, it's gone the other way, it's gone really well. He's got nearly 10,000 subscribers after doing two videos. I know he's really happy with uh, his end of the deal and, and how well everything's going for his channel. And obviously I'm really happy because I'm getting my car professionally painted. Uh, by someone who clearly really knows what he's doing and um, yeah that's thanks to all you guys watching really so so if you haven't already go over to his channel link in the description watch all the paint process but yeah let's get on with this a new pair of these is about 350 quid there's some aftermarket ones that you can buy and uh, some of the ones that you can buy are actually slightly shorter because when you lower the MX-5 uh, you end up with excessive camber on the rear wheels and you run out of adjustment on the lower uh, inside bolt on this so by making them shorter you're just regaining that adjustment and you can square your wheels back up on a really low car. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a jig off of this one and then just make it shorter. Maybe just 10 mil, 15 mil, something like that. So this is an inch and three quarter roll cage tube. And it just so happens that the bushes fit perfectly into the uh, this roll cage tube so I've got so I've already got a perfect match for these pieces of tube here and the bushes so yeah I've just got to cut four pieces of tube the exact same sizes as these uh, make some aluminium inserts basically just replicate these don't need to go all the way through they can just hold the edge of the tube so we'll have, um, we'll make a jig for this, which will just be, so you'll just have tabs on each of these, something uh, locating where the shock bolts in, and the, uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a flat um, cut out of this, which I'm gonna cut out on the CNC plasma which will be a similar shape and then all the way around the side 
it'll have like, um, you know, it'll be kind of like I-beam construction, if you like, with weld all the way around. So this will be flat, but you'll have a, a, a running lip that runs all the way up there, round there, down, up and around, and that should give it the strength. And then to sort of locate this uh, shock mount point here, I'm just going to bring the edge of the um, outer sort of flat piece, this will come straight down to the point where this bolts in. So it will come in a bit here and then kick back out and you, the bolt will just go through the edge of the plate. It's quite hard to explain, but you'll, you'll see what I mean when I start doing it. Uh, I've got it all planned out. Should be fairly straightforward, but... Okay, I've got a load of tabs, cut, got a piece of, uh, this is actually stainless for this, it's got a, um, like a guillotine cut right angle, which is a perfect square edge, so we can use that to take measurements off. Okay, what I want to do now is slide this back. I'll just do 12 mil. That's going to be the uh, width of the bolt hole, so I can just So I've just got the uh, edge to edge, basically, from the bolt hole of that to that. So that'll make the arm 12 mil shorter and should give me that full range of adjustment back. That is perfect there, so try and get that tacked without that moving. Okay, so let that cool. Make sure it's fully cool before I unbolt anything. Then I need to make uh, like a like a little boss, which will bolt in through this where the shock mounts. So like a just a steel boss with a hole drilled in it, um, and then that needs to be welded to the to the uh, fixture plate at the bottom so that we'll have that hole located and then just a little tab on here uh, for the anti-roll bar mount and then um, we'll just trace the anti-roll bar mount onto the other side of this
So these are going to be my bushes for uh, basically getting everything in the jig and I'll weld everything with this bolted in the jig. So it's 39mm diameter there, 45 on the outside. I need a 12mm uh, hole in four of them and a 14mm hole in the other four. I don't have a 40mm drill bit, got 9 sixteenths which is uh, about 14.2 but I might have a go at uh, boring them out to the right size. I'll see if I've got um, a boring bar small enough that I could do that with. Alright, so um, I am now a full day to work past the point where you last saw this and that is because I welded these tabs on fixing this in with the original rubber bushes and um, when I would flip the part over to then put it back in the jig the other way I was having to force, force it in at the bottom, like pull it over to one side a little bit to get it to actually fit back into the jig the other way. And um, that is because the bushes obviously weren't sitting perfectly true inside their um, tubes here. So I've ended up having to machine down some uh, bar to the um, 12 mil here, 14 mil here, and uh, set it all up like that so that I know that everything's dead square because I, I couldn't get it all perfectly square so it would just slot in both ways with the original bushes or with the uh, poly bushes. So by doing it this way, I've managed to get it all welded together and um, I can flip this and this end of it still lines up. Uh, this bar won't actually slot through because obviously we're, I've made the jig shorter. My next job is going to be to um, just cut these collars out, get them to the right size and then um, I need to Get this set at the right height and then I need to make like a boss to fit in where this shock would sit which will weld down to this. These are the uh, collars. Need four at 48 mil, four at 58 mil.
This little uh, spacer which I just made is for sits in where the um, shock would bolt to give me that um, position. So don't have the, the uh, actual bolt for it, but get all my collars and uh, pretty self-explanatory really, but these uh, fit now like that. Not too tight, not too loose, and then they will all just bolt into the jig, and then I have my four fixed points and my uh, shock mount. We'll do something for the anti roll bar as well, um, and then it's just a case of like making the piece to link it all together, which is uh, easy. The making of the jig and all these bits really is uh, what's taken the time. Something that's really annoying is um, I had a whole bin full of um, offcuts of this roll cage tube and I'd, it had been sat in the workshop collecting up for like years, years of just anything sort of more than a couple of inches long. So when I moved, I chucked it all in the scrap bin I took out anything that was like usable for actually like in building a roll cage, but anything less than that I chucked out and now obviously if I end up making these arms to sell or anything that would have been a really good use for all those little off cuts because this tube's really expensive. So um, yeah, lesson learned there, but it's always the way you like you can have loads of stuff knocking around and never end up using any of it and the minute you throw something away you need it which is just it's the way things go Right, we're almost finished with this. We just need to trace this anti-roll bar tab to mirror that exactly on the other side. We don't need to do it with the uh, shock mount because this runs completely central to the arm. So a left sided and a right sided arm can be fixed with that because it will be the same either side. The only thing that will be different will be the um, anti-roll bar tabs. We just need to uh, trace that across basically.
Alright, so uh, this is finished now. So we can um, mount all our collars. Wrong ones. All right, so this took a lot longer to get to this stage than I thought it would, so I'm gonna have to split this video into two parts. But this really was the hardest bit, just getting all this set up. Um, so in the next part, I'm gonna be uh, drawing up the arm, uh, cutting it all out on the CNC plasma, and then I'm going to weld it all together using the pulse MIG function on the welder I've got. I've been, um, I've been doing quite a lot with the pulse settings on the machine on anything that's a little bit thicker. I've been using that on just because it's much faster process and um, I just like it. Yeah, next one should be interesting and by the end of it we should have a, a a finished pair of custom arms and then uh, probably take them over and uh, bolt them on. Well this is a good start anyway, there's links to um, all the equipment I've used so far in this, links in the description to that. That's going to be it for this one, cheers for watching, see you on the next one.